Hi guys, so in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the repair on the wheel arch on this Audi S6. And then in Friday's video we're going to be going through the actual paintwork side of things. So, un unfortunately for the customer, he's only just recently actually had this in. He's had the front bumper corner done and he had the rear bumper done as well. And then he's just noticed, because this is a lease car and it's going back shortly, that somewhere along the line it's gained these dents in this rear arch. So obviously, being a lease car, that needs to be fixed before it goes back, otherwise it's going to get charged rather highly by the lease company. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at in today's video. And to do it, we're going to be using the GYS G-Spot system, the 3902 that we've got. So we're going to be going through how we'd repair a little wheel arch repair like that using our dent puller system. And obviously, We'll be going through the filler work and a few bits and pieces like that so let's get into this repair so the first thing that we need to do on this is put some masking tape down the door to protect the door that's to make sure that as we're repairing this and as we're sanding this and putting the filler work on and stuff like that that obviously we're not going to damage this door and ideally i don't want to leave this door wide open and then get a load of dust in the car because obviously this is a rather expensive and a nice car as well now, all the way through this video, any of the tools and products that we use, I will also leave a link in the description from our sponsors at PMP Supplies. So if anyone's interested to look at the dent puller system or anything else that we're using, then you can find the links in the description below. We're going to start off by using a die grinder and we've got these little three inch flat wheel discs um, that we use on the die grinder these days for cleaning up the metal work. And all we're going to do is clean up this wheel arch so that we can get a real nice solid weld with the dent puller on there and obviously we've got a nice clean area also to put the magnetic earth on as well um, it's really essential that you've got a nice clean area to start doing your dent pulling on before you start and it also gives us a nice surface to start the filler work and everything after as well and you'll notice at every stage pretty much I'm cleaning everything down so I've got a nice clear view of what I'm doing we've then taken a P80 on a nice hard block and we're just going to block across this area and what this will do is where we've gone across it with the die grinder that'll obviously leave rotary marks and then we're going to block across it and this will smooth out all the metal work and leave us a good indication of where the low spots are because those rotary marks will sit inside that low spot there now that's the worst low spot on this car now technically you could just fill that but we'd prefer to give it a little light little pull um, for that we're going to be using the manual liner um, as shown here, we don't need to use the slide hammer for this because the slide hammer is just a little bit too heavy duty. So we'll start off by attaching our earth on that nice little clean bit there. And then nice and carefully with a light amount of pressure, we're just going to let the G-Spot system automatically weld to this and give it a tiny little bit of a tweak just to lift this low spot out um, and try and get it as flush as possible but obviously not leaving it raised. Because if we leave this slightly raised, then obviously when we come to do the filler work, we're going to end up with a high spot there rather than a light, a very, very light low spot. So I'd rather just leave this a tiny, tiny bit low or as close to level as possible. Now what I would use is something like a flexible um, ruler. You can use a straight edge on this to make sure that nothing's too high before you take your welder off and finish up. We're then just going to clean up the welding marks with the rotary die grinder again. And then we can get on to using a P80 and we're just going to lightly block and blend all these paint edges in now and just basically blend this area in nicely so we've got a nice area to skim over. You'll also see at the top there there's another little tiny low spot at the top end which we're going to get out when we give this a light skim. The biggest part of this is we just want to give this a really nice, very, very thin, very fine skim. We don't want to be really putting a load of filler into a brand new car we want to just give this a nice light skim that we can block out leave a very very fine layer of just finishing filler in there we don't want to be using any heavy thick fillers in there we just want to use a nice light finishing filler so that when this job's done it's a nice seamless repair and there's very very little filler or very very little film build added onto this new car So 
So now we've got that area blocked out and we've got those paint edges flushed in, we're just going to run it over with the DA just to make sure that they're feathered in that little bit more and also catch a little bit more down at the bottom. We also want to be extra careful that obviously we don't touch any of the paint on the door because we're not painting the door and obviously we don't catch the sill as well which is why I've put a double layer of masking tape up that door edge and along that sill edge just to protect that and I'm being extra careful with the sander to make sure that I don't go heavy on those edges because I'm just trying to feather the very edge of the paint in. Now one little tip when you're doing um, filler work on the edge of a wheel arch like this is to just put a little bit of masking tape along the very edge of your arch there because what I don't want to do is get filler inside that door edge so I'll just put a little bit of tape in there and back mask it off and that will stop the filler from creeping inside the door jam and leave me with a nice clean edge when we're done. So this is the particular finishing filler that we're using today. We're just going to mix it up. Pretty standard mix really. A golf ball size to a pea size of hardener. We're going to give that a really good nice mix up and then we're going to get onto applying this onto the car. Now, personally, my preference would be to try and get your filler on the car as smooth as possible. Um, the closer you get it to where you want it to be um, when you've finished, obviously the less sand in time and the less elbow grease is going to go into the repair stage. Now with the panel all cleaned up and blown off and wiped over, the first thing that I want to do is just to spread the filler on the surface. I'm not too worried on this arch about getting the shape there first, I just want to get a nice even coverage to make sure that the filler is completely adhered to the panel and then we'll work out the shape and smoothing it in a little bit more. So as you can see, I'm just spreading it on, making sure the whole area is covered and everything's stuck before I start and then we'll start working in the shape. Now you don't want to spend too much time on this. The longer I find that you spend playing around with the shape on it, the worse it'll probably get. So if you can just get that rough shape back in, so that flat edge across the top there and obviously the main flat section here which is probably the most important at this stage to get right because um, we did this in one fill we didn't need to do it in two or three fills it was literally just that one skim and we were done we could get that whole repair done we didn't have to fill it two or three times so that's ideal and as you'll see here if we just open the door now and we remove this tape none of that filler now has gone over that panel edge so we've got a nice clean edge on that panel so we're starting off with a P80 on the block and we're just going to work firstly on this flat section here. To me this would be the most important section to work on first because that smaller section around there is a little bit harder to get in. So if we get the main body and the first shape back on then we can mark up where the arch line should be and then we'll work on that small area at the top. Now obviously this does take a little bit of time and a little bit of experience but the more you do it, the easier it gets. Now, you'll also notice that we didn't put a lot of filler on this at all. In fact, I probably only put on about half of what I mixed. And you'll, as you'll see here, about 80% of this is actually coming back off and ending up on the floor. So when this is done, this will just be a very, very light skim of filler around this arch. And I'm trying to work it in a nice fashion, blocking it nice and straight and nice and flat to give me that really nice even arch line across there and I just want it slightly feathered in um, I don't want to go a hundred percent of the way with the P80 I want to take it around about I would say about 90 95 percent of the way with the P80 so that once we've got the initial main shape and the bulk of it back in with an 80 on the top and the bottom and then we can switch over to a P180 and just refine that final shape and get everything really nice and that final level ready for primer. Now, the reason that I would always go about doing this one face at a time rather than trying to sand both of these at the same time is it's just it makes it a lot easier. If you break this down into sections, so you're doing this one big flat shape here and then you're doing the top arch line, it makes it a lot easier, especially for... The beginners or the DIY guys work on one shape at a time as you go. So what we're going to do next is going to use my arch tool. I'm just going to mark out the wheel arch line for the car, which is going to give me a guide then to use that I can put that very small, very tight top part of this arch line back in. Um, 
and obviously using my arch tool it makes it a lot easier to get that perfect arch line but we're then going to use the pencil line and we're just going to put a little bit piece of masking tape around there to give us a really nice sanding guide to sand up to so that now when we get the block and the 80 we can work on sanding up to but not sanding off the masking tape and obviously we've got that perfectly masked out line now i'll always step the sandpaper slightly in so that I can keep it off the door edge. So on one side it stepped out, on the other side it stepped in. So the stepped inside now is rubbing against where that door is, so we're not gonna damage that door in any way. And it just makes it that little bit easier to start sanding away on this now without the risk, obviously, of hitting through the edge of that door or having to mask off the whole door shut to stop dust getting inside the car. Just little things like this can make your life a lot easier and make the job a lot quicker and a lot cleaner. So now we have all the initial shape roughed in with the 80 and we're happy that we don't need to put any more filler in. I'm just gonna use the 180 now to refine all these 80 scratches back and leave this prepped ready for using primer. Now you'll see that on the very edges of where this filler is, it's only very light and very see-through and it's only really in that middle area where it was damaged where it's not quite see-through. So it's just a tiny little bit thicker there. So we've 180 the flat face. We're then just gonna draw the line back on again with the arch tool, mask that back off again to give us that ideal perfect line to sand up to. But again, we're not gonna be trying to sand the tape off. We just wanna sand up to the tape. So we'll end up with a real nice, crisp, even and accurate arch line back around that arch. We're then gonna use the 180 just to go around this top half and block all this top half down the same. So we wanna take those 80 scratches out and leave a nice 180 edge. And then just clean up that very edge of the panel along there as well. So that when all this filler work is done, it's all gonna be nice to take primer. And also, you know, again, just keeping it clean, taking a look, make sure you've got no pinholes or anything like that. And then as you can see here, we've got that nice perfect arch line back on the rear quarter now of this Audi S5. So now all the repair side's done. So before I take this outline masking off, I'm just gonna use a 600 soft hand pad just to scuff up a couple of inches around the outside of where we're gonna be putting the primer down, just to make sure I've got that nice keyed surface for the primer to lay down just above the repair here and obviously also at the bottom so that everything's nice and keyed. So when we put the primer down, obviously we're gonna have no adhesion issues or anything like that when that goes on. And then I'm gonna get all this cleaned up, take all the masking off and start getting it remasked, ready for the primer stage. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video on this arch repair. Join us on Friday at 7 p.m. for part two when we're gonna be going through the primer stage, the paint stage, the polishing stage, and also show you guys the final repaired vehicle as well. So that is it for me for today, guys, and I'll see you again soon for the next video. Don't forget, obviously, if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified of when we've got a new upload. Last time.